Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today we're talking about failed timing chain tensioners. So we are back talking about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're going to be looking at the 2.0 TSI timing chain tensioner failure. This is actually the fourth supersession of this timing chain tensioner. We are now on part number K. And a quick shout out to my buddies at Apex Tuning in Apex, North Carolina for hooking me up with a few of these uh, timing chain tensioners to check out. Before we get into the show, we need to talk about the sponsor of the day, which is of course Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen and Audi parts experts. And they're also the original sponsor of the show, so super shout out to Paul and the boys over at Deutsch Auto Parts. Right now, they're actually working on a DIY kit for this timing chain tensioner. And as always, they have awesome service, great prices, a ton of cool DIY videos, so check them out at shop. DAP.com. And as always, I will be sure to put links in the show notes for you guys. So what the heck is this timing chain tensioner? Well, the CCTA engine is driven by timing chains, not a timing belt. Very similar to the way that the VR6 is timed. There's a series of three chains. One drives the oil pump, one drives the balance shaft assembly, and the other one drives the camshafts. The tensioner we're going to be talking about today is the one that keeps tension on the chains for the exhaust and the intake cam. So how do these work? Well, basically the tensioner pushes on a guide rail. That guide rail pushes tension onto the chain and keeps the chain nice and tight. They're both spring and hydraulic controlled, as well as safety latches to make sure that the tensioner doesn't squeeze all the way in. Again, keeping consistent tension on the chain that goes from the crankshaft to the camshafts. How do they fail? Well, I guess it really depends on which of the four generations that you have installed in the vehicle. This particular one, which is the end suffix, generally we see the ring come off, which allows this little latch to pop off and basically causes the tensioner to collapse. Basically, it can be any failure of the latch that keeps the tensioner from collapsing back in. We also have to consider that oil pressure may actually be a contributing factor to this failure. So what are some of the symptoms of a timing chain tensioner? Well, the most common one is basically a dead engine, either a no start, or car died while driving and then won't start. And that's almost always accompanied by a really fast crank. And that really fast crank is actually an indication of no compression in your engine. We might also get a check engine light for something like a camshaft crankshaft correlation or timing over advanced, timing overly retarded. We might also hear a rattle from the passenger side of the engine. But the most common failure is definitely either the car died and won't restart or just plain won't start again accompanied by a really fast crank. So how do we diagnose the failure of the timing chain tensioner? Well, it really all depends on what we're experiencing. If we have a rattle, we can usually put our ear up to the timing cover, either upper or lower, and listen for the noise. If it's a check engine light issue, we wanna put the engine in base time to make sure that the crankshaft and the two cams are all lined up mechanically properly, and that's without any input or influence from the ECM. And on the extreme cases, we can actually take the oil fill cap off have a second person crank the car and we'll look down at the camshafts to see if they're even turning. Most of the time when it's just a failure of the tensioner, all of the engine components will still turn, they're just all turning at the wrong time. And we probably have catastrophic engine failure, which means we may have bent valves. As far as normal time of failure, it really all depends. Anywhere from 20,000 miles on up, the sky's kind of the limit, you know, as far as when these may fail. But 20,000 miles is about the lowest that I've seen. So, is this a DIY job or not? Well, it actually can be a DIY if you're doing it as part of maintenance. But once this bad boy's failed, it's probably better left to professionals because it's a really big job. We're talking disassembly of the upper engine and replacing valves. If you do this as a DIY, remember you need some special tools. There is a tool that when you take the crank pulley off, you have to install it and it takes the place of the crank pulley. And that tool is T10368. It's a little donut looking washer thing. And if you don't install that and then put the crank pulley bolt back in, you'll actually wind up most likely putting your engine in out of time. Everything on the front will look timed, but you'll be about half a tooth off between the gear on the crankshaft and the crankshaft itself. And I know that from experience. We had a guy do that in the shop years ago when the CCTA first came out, didn't follow the instructions, and we wound up timing that engine about seven times before we finally got it right. So this is one of those parts that it's probably worth checking or having checked or going ahead and replacing as preventative maintenance. 
Also, when you replace this part, I always recommend replacing the lower timing cover as well. It's on really good with that thick, high quality Volkswagen sealant. And usually what happens is you wind up bending it or tweaking it. And if you do that and you don't replace it, you can definitely cause a pretty significant oil leak. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube as well as on the blog, humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously on YouTube. Hey, one more shout out to the folks at Apex Tuning in, oddly enough, Apex, North Carolina. I really appreciate you guys holding on to these for me so that I could do this video for everybody, as well as a huge shout out to Paul and the boys at Deutsch Auto Part. I really appreciate you guys sponsoring the show and being the original Humble Mechanic sponsor. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Oh, got a bunch of beer. Today we're drinking House of Play from Raleigh Brewing Company.